everybody. Welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. How's it going today? Thank you so much for joining me. I see a lot of familiar faces in the chat already. John, Jennifer, Clarissa, my good friend, Lisa Carney. Hey, Lisa, thanks so much for joining us here. Lisa is a fantastic photo retoucher, finisher for the Hollywood industry, an amazing Photoshop artist. Lisa is one of the very few people that I've actually had time to spend with and see her work in real time, not necessarily her teaching, but actually seeing her work. And I'm always amazed and I always learn something from Lisa. So make sure you check Lisa out. She's got a lot of great content on her behance and on her site um thank you so much for joining me sam jennifer again you guys are all amazing today we're going to be talking about creating contrast in photoshop we're going to look at different techniques that we can use to add contrast to an image if you're starting out with photoshop and you don't know what contrast means we'll talk about that we're going to look at adjustment layers we're going to look at blending modes camera raw filter a whole bunch of things so that you learn how to apply contrast to your photos um, i'm going to switch over to my screen now and I'm going to direct you over into behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. And from here, you can click this blue, take the challenge button to join me. Make sure you check out the community uh, community chat on Discord. But the important thing is to download the assets here where it says increasing contrast. You can get on, you can click on the get started button to open up the files inside of Photoshop. That link will actually open up this image here, which is um if you just start uh, on the on the discover panel if you click on the magnifying glass you'll open up this window and if you type contrast and scroll down to the hands-on tutorials you will see the image here increase contrast with a blend mode and an adjustment layer this tutorial is actually by my friend scott valentine this is not one of mine but this is the image that we're going to start with i also have a tutorial in here um, right here, uh, control photo brightness and contrast with curves. So we're going to look at, uh, we're going to use these two images to create contrast in an image. We're going to talk about how adjustment layer works, blending modes work, and the camera raw filter. So this is where you can find the images that I will be using for today. By the way, let me know where you're streaming from. I'm streaming from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area in San Ramon, California. I'd love to see where you guys are all watching from. Awesome. So let's get started with this image. As you can see, this image looks a little flat and adding contrast to an image simply means that we're going to make the darker pixels darker and the brighter pixels brighter just to make the image pop and it doesn't feel so flat. There's a lot of ways of doing that in Photoshop. One of the easiest methods is the technique that Scott Valentine showed in the hands-on tutorial. And it's basically, um, it's very simple. All you need to do is create an adjustment layer. You can create really a levels or curves adjustment layer. It really doesn't matter which one. Um, in this case, we're not really going to apply any settings to the adjustment layer. So you can really select either or, it really doesn't matter. But the point is that when you have an adjustment layer on top of a layer, it sort of duplicates the layer below that when you apply a blending mode. So in, in other words, if I apply, for example, the multiply blending mode to this adjustment layer without making any adjustments, that's exactly the same thing as duplicating the layer and applying that same blending mode. It gives you exactly the same result. So we're going to use this adjustment layer to apply the image onto itself and create contrast. And again, we're not going to make any adjustments to the curve. And we're going to talk about the curve a little later on and how it works. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. Also, I got into the habit of deleting um, a layer masks that don't have anything. And actually, that's a habit I got into because of Lisa, who's watching right now. Um, in some projects I've worked with her, um, we need to delete the layer mask that don't contain anything. So that's a new habit I got into, thanks to Lisa. But anyway, so we have this adjustment layer here. And with this adjustment layer, we're only going to change the blending mode. So when it's normal, it looks identical. The image looks identical as without um, the adjustment layer. But if we change the blending mode to linear light, you're going to get this super high contrast image, which is obviously too strong, but we can bring down the intensity. Now, you can bring down the intensity by using the opacity slider, but watch what happens. When you do so, the image starts looking flat again, but linear light 
is one of eight blending modes that gives you different results when you change opacity compa compared to fill. This is a link to my website. I'm going to paste it in the chat. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I created um, like, I don't know, 40 minute video talking about each individual blending mode. And also on this page on my website, photoshoptrainingchannel.com. And the link is uh, slash blending modes explain with a hyphen in between uh, blending modes explain. That'll get you there. The link is in the chat. But the point is that if you scroll down, you'll see this huge long article that I wrote talking about all the different blending modes, what they do and all the different settings. But the one that I want to bring your attention to now is um this one right was well, not necessarily a blending mode is this section right here opacity versus fill with blending modes so um nine <clears throat> excuse me 19 out of the 27 blending modes behave the same when you adjust opacity compare or fill however eight blending modes in this list we started right here including linear light which is the one we're using behaves differently when we adjust fill compared to opacity and that's what we're going to adjust now. So we have linear light selected. And if I bring down the opacity, you see that I get this flat look on my image. But if I adjust the fill, notice that I retain some of that contrast. So I can just fine tune this accordingly and get it to where I need it to be. In this case, I don't necessarily need to make any adjustments to the curve, but if I wanted to, I could make some adjustments. And I'll explain how the curve works in a few moments. But the point is, is that this is one of the methods that you can use. It doesn't really require you making any type of adjustments. You just adjust the blending mode and bring down the fill a little bit. As a side note, um, one of the differences in those eight blending modes is that you can also um, uncheck a box to make the paint that you paint on brighter or hotter. Let me make this a white color here. And let me adjust my brush so that I don't have any spacing and I'm just going to paint like so. And maybe I need zero hardness so that I can have something that looks like it's glowing like that, right? So that's my, my glow. If I wanted to make this glow seem um, brighter, hotter, more like a specular highlight, what you can do is double click to the side of the layer and change the blending mode to um, linear dodge add which is one of the blending modes that we talked about in the eight blending mode list so when you bring down opacity it looks one way when you bring down the fill it looks another way but another difference is that when you uncheck transparency shapes layers you get that result see that see how it looks hotter and much brighter so now this could be a specular highlight in a composite also when you bring down the opacity it doesn't look like it doesn't look that good but bring down the fill and it will look much much better and now this could be maybe the sunlight hitting the water or something like that but you get the idea this be this becomes more of a hotter look brighter look than um just using you know normal <clears throat> excuse me normal or normal or screen with the opacity uh lower so if you want to create a spectral highlight make sure that you enable color dodge or linear dodge add and then bring down the fill and make sure to uncheck transparency shapes layers so you can get that result so that was a little side trick there for you but that is another advantage of using one of those eight blending modes we're going to now work with this image here and we're going to talk about um, several other ways of adding contrast to an image <clears throat> cool so what we're going to do now is just create a levels adjustment layer. This is probably a little easier to use than the curves adjustment layer. Um, I don't think it's better. I think it's just a different tool that allows you to control, <clears throat> excuse me, control the luminance values of an image um, a little differently um, than curves, but in, in an easier way, I think, for beginners. So no better, no worse than curves, just different. So we have five sliders here. The sliders on top control the range of colors. So if I move this slider here to the right, now I'm telling Photoshop that all the pixels that had a luminance value of this shade of gray here be directly below and darker will be whatever the darkest color of the image is. The darkest color is black because that's what I have set on this slider. But if I drag this slider over to the right, now I'm telling Photoshop that the darkest color of the image will be this shade of gray, which is why the darker pixels here now have the same shade of gray as this slider. And the same thing is true on the other side. I can click and drag this over to the left 
And now I'm telling Photoshop that all the pixels that have this shade of gray or brighter will be the brightest color of the image, which is white, because this is what this slider is telling us that the brightest color will be white. If I move this over to the left, now I'm telling Photoshop that the brightest color will no longer be white. It will be this shade of gray, which is why the, the sky, which was previously white, became that shade of gray. So this is how this um, panel works. The one in the center controls the gamma of the image. One of like one of the super. Uh, this is not necessarily like super accurate, but it helps you, I guess, uh, think of how this lighter works. You can think of it as contrast, even though it's really not. Um, it's gamma, but you know, if you're just starting out, contrast is good enough. Um, what you can do now is use these sliders to just bring the slider here on the left, the dark levels the dark uh, values up into the little graph here where the values where the information starts that way all these pixels that were nothing or you know not necessarily black or black now it creates more contrast and we can do the same thing on the other side just by dragging the slider over to where the information starts um in the um slider here then you can just control that accordingly to decide how much contrast you're going to have in that image. And this looks much, much better. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat before we move on. Awesome, Frank. Um, he didn't know about the transparency option. You're welcome. Awesome, Lisa. Thank you so much for that comment. <laughs> yeah, Lisa taught me that, Sean. I don't even know what we're talking about. Oh, the fill and opacity thing. <laughs> Cool. Um, but anyway, so that's one way of adding contrast to an image. Now we're going to use the curves adjustment layer. This is a little bit more complicated to use um, just because we really have two points here. We have the black point and we have the white point here, but we can add more. And basically the way this works is the point here at the bottom controls the darkest pixel. So I can kind of do the same thing. I can drag this over to the right where the information starts. By the way, in the curves display options you might want to enable the histogram just so that you can have the information of your image but i can drag this over to the right and we have some information coming through and i can drag the white point to the left and kind of create that same effect we did earlier but then when we're, once we're in here we can create more points to add or subtract light i'll reset the adjustment layer just so i can explain this point notice how there's a black line going across here See this line going from one corner to the other corner? Um, that's basically the default. If you create a point and you drag up, you add light. If you drag down, you subtract light. You can think of the curves adjustment layer like a dimmer switch at home where you just drag up to add light and you drag down to make the room darker. Um, so in this case, you can create a point here. And by the way, so you can see why I'm creating points along this curve. I can select this tool here and hover over the image. And you can see when I hover over the image, the circle on the line. So notice that when I hover over the clouds, I'm hovering over this area of the curve. That's because that's where those brightness values are. Look at how bright the clouds are. And then follow that circle down to this gradient going from black to white. Well, this is where the clouds are right here in the, in the luminance values in this area. If I go into the shadows here, notice now where those luminance values are. They're right about here. So. You can use this tool if you want to. You could do something like this where you can click and drag these sliders over like so to where the information starts. And then if you want to target a specific area, you can then hover over with this tool. You can click and you can drag down or you can drag up to add light. Again, dragging down is just like a doomer switch, subtracting light and dragging up adds light. So maybe you can you want to add more light to the darker areas, but then the clouds may be too bright. So you can click on the clouds and then drag down. Obviously, that doesn't look that good in this case, but you can now use these points to adjust the contrast. Also, here's a few keyboard shortcuts for you. Notice that when I click on one of these points, it lights up. You can use the plus keys on the keyboard or the minus key on the keyboard to go up and down. So I can now subtract the uh, select the second one and then use the arrow keys on the keyboards to go left, up, right down so this gives you total control of how how you adjust the curves if i want to go up to the point above that i'll tap on the plus key it goes up and now i can manipulate that 
white point and I can adjust it accordingly to get the result that I want. So this gives you total control. A lot of times when you click on something, you might inadvertently move it. And, you know, to get it back to the point that you had, it could be difficult unless you undo, of course. This actually works, <clears throat> excuse me, works great if you're editing on the go, if you're editing like in a playing car, train, something like that, then those keyboard shortcuts are great because it's, it's a lot more difficult to select these points and move them um, with, uh, with um, accuracy if, you know, you're like in a moving vehicle or something like that. So it's a keyboard shortcut that I highly, whoops, that I highly, highly recommend. I just punched the mic, by the way. That's what that sound was. Um, by the way, you have this button here that resets the layer. Something um, I also want to talk about, not necessarily relevant in this particular image. The image is doesn't have any um, white balancing issues, but if you wanted to, you could also white balance your image by using the red, green, and blue channels. Um, these channels work just like the RGB composite where you drag up to add light and you drag down to subtract light. When you drag up, you'll add light in the color of the channel that you're on, in this case, red. But if you drag down, you'll subtract the red light and make the image darker in the opposite color, in this case, cyan. The same thing is true for the green. When you drag up, you can add green light or you subtract green light and get magenta. And of course, with the blue channel, when you drag up, you'll get blue. And when you subtract, you get the opposite color, which is yellow. So you can use this to create some pretty cool effects. Maybe I don't know if this is going to work, but I can maybe add a cooling effect to this. And then maybe in the RGB composite, just make it a little bit darker. So I don't know, maybe this is like, like a you know late afternoon shot or something like that. But the point is that you have all that control with the curves adjustment layer, which is why earlier I was saying that it's a, an adjustment layer that is very powerful. But if you're starting out, the levels adjustment layer might be the way to go just because it's a lot easier to comprehend, I think, and to just uh, drag these sliders. The reason that I came back to the levels adjustment layer was because you also have the options of adjusting the red green channels here. If you drag the black point to the right, you'll get the opposite color, which is cyan. And if you drag the white point to the left, you get the color of the channel that you're on. The same thing or the opposite is true, I guess, on the it's on these sliders. If you drag this white point to the left, notice how the image takes the opposite color, which is cyan. And you drag the white, the black point to the right, the image turns red, which is the color of the channel that I'm on. And the same thing will be true for all the other channels. Says Ted is a curves guy. Definitely. Um, I use both. Um, I can't say that I'm one over the other. It really depends on what I'm doing. Um, but if you're starting out, levels is great. And obviously, if you have more experience, then definitely curves probably will be all you need. Um, it depends on, on your workflow and how you like to work. But curve, curves is fantastic. Awesome. Now let's talk about adding contrast using, well, I guess since we're talking about contrast, we can also talk about the brightness and contrast lighter. Um, this adjustment layer is also designed to add contrast to an image. But as you can see, I think it's very limited just because we have two sliders. So I don't necessarily use this adjustment layer to add contrast to an image. I'll, I'd rather use all the methods I've talked about today um, just because I get more control. Um, so I just wanted to call that out that there is an adjustment layer specifically for contrast, but I rarely use it. Cool. Lisa wrote, I use levels for value, tone curves for color. Yeah, very good, good way of using it. I completely would agree with that. Um, I'm going to go into the filter or you when you apply in a uh, camera raw filter, most of the time, I don't like to generalize and say every time, but most of the time it's a good idea to convert it to a smart object. Then you can go into filter camera raw filter, and that will bring up this filter that gives you total control of your uh, value tone and color using these panels here on the right. The basic panel gives you access to your temperature, your lighting adjustments, and the detail sliders here and the colors, saturation colors here. And what you can do in a situation like this is you can drag to the right to increase contrast or drag to the left to subtract contrast or decrease contrast. And in this case, I will use the contrast ladder just to get me going. But the advantage of this 
filter is that I can also target the shadows and I can make the shadows darker and maybe make the highlights brighter as well. You can also adjust how dark the blacks are by using this slider or the whites by using this slider as well. So as you can see, I'm just really focusing on trying to keep everything with contrast and still have details in the clouds. By the way, um, here's a trick um, for you. Let me see. Um, I'm going to reset to open so I can reset my sliders. And if you're ever working with an image where if you drag the slider, the highlight slider all the way to the left and you still don't have all the detail that you want on your image, what you can do is maybe start by reducing the exposure just a little bit, just to give you that extra boost and then do the highlights adjustment and then just bring the shadows all the way up. In this case, it's probably not going to work because it's not the the, uh, the the right image for that. But I've done that sometimes where where I end up bringing the exposure just down a little bit and then bringing the highlights all the way to the to the left. And that can help you bring out some of the detail in, in the highlights. Um, in this case, it, it was definitely not the, the image to show that example but that is definitely something that you can try in some cases. I probably was a little heavy handed, maybe just reduce it down a little bit and then you can get a little more detail in the highlights. And of course you can create um, uh, targeted adjustments and just apply the contrast, for example, on, on the bottom part here by clicking and dragging on this linear gradient and then adjusting the contrast here. And maybe in this part, bring up the exposure a little bit. The point is, is that this adjustment layer, or I'm sorry, this uh, filter gives you total control of your image. Something we haven't really uh, talked about yet is um, here in the edit panel, you can come down and adjust the texture. And that also gives you contrast. As far as I understand, um, this slider was actually created to smooth the skin in um, Lightroom, but then they realize that if you do the opposite, you get a lot of texture. So then this uh, is definitely adding contrast here in the details. And the image is maybe looking a little too, um, it, it, it's probably having too much contrast, but I think you get the idea. Then we have the clarity, which is contrast in the midtones, I believe. And it gives you a similar result where you can just make those pixels pop. The dehaze is completely different. This uh, adds haze to an image or reduces haze if we had if we had haze it also creates a contrast effect if you drag over to the right but i rarely use this slider for contrast <clears throat> i see a comment in the chat that, excuse me that sean said use select sky mask that's right if i was trying to do what i said earlier about adding uh, detail to the um, sky you could definitely use um, the select sky feature um, which is somewhere here, create mask, and you can select the sky and that'll give you a selection just on the sky. So that tip earlier wasn't necessarily just for skies, just anything that needed an extra boost. But if you specifically wanted to target the sky, you can do so with that particular mask. And you can see now I've selected the sky. So thanks so much, uh, Sean, I think it was. Yeah, Sean for mentioning that in the chat. Cool. Um, and of course we have the saturation sliders here um, we can increase the vibrance which is um which adds saturation to an image in pixels that are not highly saturated and it also protects skin tones as opposed to saturation which just uh which just increases saturation on all pixels equally and also um, we don't have a lot of time but i'll briefly mention that we do have a curves adjustment here where you can do basically the same thing we did in the adjustment layer and you can also select the different um, channels here and in this particular panel we have a better representation of what you will add if you drag up or what you will drag if you drag down you can see you don't even have to think about it you just see the red here and you see the cyan here and the same thing is true for the other panels I actually think this will be a much better way of laying out the properties panel um, but you know it's not, and it is in Camera Raw, so at least we have it here. So in case you forget, you can come into the Camera Raw filter. By the way, I'm in in the point curve. If you're in the parame uh, parametric curve, then it's a little different. Um, you're kind of confined to these areas here, and you can adjust these sliders to have more control of what pixels you're going to affect. I rarely use that. I usually like to stick with the point curve, and that just, I feel, gives me total control. Um, 
but the other one could be more beneficial if you want to just stay with it within a certain range. For example, in this case, I'm adjusting the darks. Here, I'm adjusting the highlights. And you can do the same thing by using the sliders here. So totally up to you on how you prefer to work. But like I said, in my, I prefer the point curve better. Um, once again, guys, let me just, um, oops, let me cancel all that. I just want to let everyone know to remember to check out behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and make sure that you click on the increase contrast um, box. You can download the files, check out the community chat. Thank you so much for being here with me. I know we're kind of going over, but I appreciate everybody being here and learning about contrast. All right, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much and stay tuned for the next stream. Bye, everybody.